Hi creators, it's Doro Kylie here, and uh, I didn't do a video yesterday. You know, sometimes it's just not there. It's like the ribbons of energy from the universe uh, don't line up for me. Um, so yesterday was a day where I just had to be quiet and and uh, and uh, tune in and be authentic. I really needed to uh, try to stay grounded in my authenticity and uh so when when i don't feel like doing a post i'm not going to do a post i'm not going to be predictable i'm afraid uh what was it gandhi said once uh, my commitment is to truth not to consistency <laughs> so yesterday was an off day for me so i didn't do anything i'm back so today um i was sitting out on my deck this morning um doing my meditation and uh, I started to hear the acorns dropping. So it's, it's really early for acorns to be dropping, although some, some different kinds of oak trees drop their acorns uh, earlier than others. Um, I'm going to post right here a picture to show the difference between um, red oak and white oak. There's a funny uh, trivia fact that um, one scientist, uh, behavioral animal scientist, uh, was wondering why squirrels bury some acorns and then take some acorns back to their nest. And so <laughs> he answered the question. He found out that the ones that they take back to their nest for the winter are the white acorns. And the ones that they bury in the ground are the red acorns. And the reason for that is the red acorns have more tannins in them. And that means it's a very uh, bitter uh, flavor. Um, and the white acorns are a little bit sweeter. So the squirrels take the uh, white acorns back to their nests so they can eat all of those throughout the course of the winter. And then by the time they run out of white acorns, they can go down and dig up the red acorns. And after, the, after several snows and melting and snow and melting, the, uh, the tannins are being leached out of the red acorns. And, uh, I, I, and then they taste sweeter because so, they don't have as much tannin. And I thought, isn't that brilliant? So yes, you can eat any kind of acorn, but you do have to flush the tannins out, and the Native Americans would do that by collecting them, putting them in a kind of a handmade net, and letting them run uh, with the current of a, of a small stream or, or a river. Just let the water wash over them for you know a couple of weeks, and then it, that will wash tannins out, and then you can pound it into flour and make bread. So that's your trivia. You can actually, there's a lot of um, recipes for acorns on the internet, uh, but most of them are for breads and, and stuff. You can even make tea. and So acorns are on my mind today, and I'm happy because they're, they haven't really, we haven't had any bumper crops for a few years. They don't drop every year. So this year we're getting some, uh, some nice acorns falling already. You know, there are a lot of animals out there that depend on acorns to get fattened up for the winter, especially the bears. Um, I had a fun evening last night. Oh, by the way, I'm going to share today a story uh, that I wrote back in early uh, 2000s, 2008, I believe. It's called The Human Acorn. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and read that to you today. Very short story. I used to always love to read short stories, um, but I needed to tell you about my adventure last night. I had a bat in the house, uh, and this is not the first time. I, living in the mountains like this is always an adventure. I had a bear in my greenhouse. I have bats in the house. I almost stepped on a copperhead in the root cellar. Um, 
Uh, I was chasing a wolf spider around the other day. <laughs> it's so, it's so fun living with nature, um, but you kind of get used to these little things. So this bat in the house, what you have to do, if you ever have a bat in the house, you have to think like a bat. What do you want? You want to get outside. You don't like strong light. So what I do is the room where the bat is in, I turn on all the lights and I open a door into a dark hallway. Uh, or even better, I open a window into the night sky and they'll hear the outside and they'll, they'll go to the window and go outside if they know that they can get out that way. So that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those are my little bits of country living uh, knowledge. Um, so I, I share little t tidbits along the way. So let me tell you this story. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to uh, run out of time. I've got ten minutes to read this story. So here we go. This is called the human acorn. If an acorn had a human mind, I believe it would be quite happy, gently swaying among the leaves on warm summer days, supported by its mother tree along with all its siblings. But as the days grow shorter and the mother's sap begins to slow, this human acorn might begin to feel uncomfortable as its mother's nourishment withdraws. As the acorn looks around, he sees his siblings falling one by one into the dark and mysterious ground cover below. Suddenly he feels afraid. Oh, God, how horrible, it cries. I don't want to fall. But alas, one late afternoon, the acorn feels itself losing its grip. Oh, it's the end. Someone help me. But its cries go unanswered. The last fiber of connection is severed and the acorn falls mercilessly into the unknown. After it hits the ground and rolls a few inches, it's surprised to discover it's still alive, although cold and unable to see where it is anymore. It can no longer see its siblings and the few warm rays of the sun are blocked by the undergrowth. I'm so lost. I've been abandoned, it cries, and the days grow colder and colder. The poor little acorn believes it has been cast into hell for reasons unknown to itself. The wind blows. It's covered in the death of rotting leaves, buried under snow and ice. With the long winter comes a horrific cascade of painful thoughts and feelings of despair, hopelessness, and confusion. Then one day, the snow and ice melt away, and the warmth of the sun can be slightly detected through the heavy layers of rotting debris that has covered the little acorn in darkness. Oh, thank God! Oh, that feels so nice! It says to itself and fully enjoys the brief experience. And as the little acorn begins to feel more alive, it starts trying to find a way out of this dark place. It tries yelling and praying, but no one answers. He knows there must be more because he can hear birds singing and other sounds of little creatures beginning to stir. Oh, I've just got to get out of here, it says desperately and begins pushing and pushing and praying for strength all the while. There's nothing else to do. I have no other choice. I have to get out of here. After pushing and pushing, it tries to roll or jump or fly, whatever works. Suddenly, he breaks. Ouch! And the pain quickly subsides. Oh, what's that? I feel something warm and delicious. Oh, it's wonderful. The little acorn begins to reach through the cracks of its shell and absorb the moisture and nourishment. Oh, thank you. You have answered my prayers at last. It reaches and reaches deeper and deeper, gaining more and more strength. And after it's been fully nourished, it pauses. Oh, but I'm still so lonely. God, I have no friends. 
and with its eyes gazing upward, it discovers that its old rotten shell no longer confines it, so it begins to move, pushing easily through the darkness. Oh, I wonder if I'm going in the right direction. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so alone and confused. I may be here forever. But I have to keep going. Just keep going. There's no turning back. Then suddenly, there's a blinding light. Oh, Lord, this is it. I've attained enlightenment. I'm in heaven. And as it grows, it can see its mother again and all its little siblings waving happily. Hello, hello, they all cry. Oh, this is incredible. I think this is, this is amazing, it thinks as its heart overflows with joy. And then the little acorn suddenly is struck. Oh, it says to itself, if I had only known, everything was perfect all along. So that's my little story of the human acorn. All of the trials and tribulations that we endure throughout our lives. Um, it's all going somewhere. It's going to fulfillment. And right now we have... We've, we're dropping from the tree, we're rolling along, we're getting buried under stuff, and uh, people don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I think it's all, it's all in the plan. We are in the process of becoming true creators. True creators. That's my belief. That's my understanding. That's the whole spiritual goal, is to break out of our confined little me self and realize that we are creators of our reality and we are co-creating all of it. So this is a shorter video today but I just needed to share my little story with you. Um, I actually posted it back in uh, 2008 and was surprised to find that it has been shared all over the world, and I think it's at least four languages that I know of. Um, the Human Acorn. What were some of the other titles? The, the Acorn That Woke Up, or some other languages. Uh, it's a good one. And so with that, I hope you will all stay creative. Hi Creators, it's Dora O'Kiley with CreationCoach.com and I'm on a mission to improve this world through you. If you get anything through these videos, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Stay creative.